You know, you know, it's it's tax season too, Milton, and a lot of people say that you got to work from basically uh, January till about um, March, April, just to pay the income taxes you owe to the government for the entire year. So you're working for the government for the entire year to pay your, for for four months of the entire year to pay your income taxes, and now because of rising interest rates and inflation, mm -hmm. people are having to work another week out of their month just to dedicate that towards rent. And one of the simple ways of measuring your housing costs are affordable is to calculate how much your income is left over to cover your bills once your rent is paid. So, you know, my, my wife and I have been uh, fighting through our eight year, by the way, it's, uh, yesterday was our eight year wedding anniversary. So if my wife is out there watching this, happy anniversary again, baby. She and I decided to partner together and, and get married eight years ago. We've been together, what, uh, 10? Uh, I'm sorry, 11. 11 years now we've been together. And, uh, but married for eight. And um, we dedicated our lives to saying, we want to make sure that housing, cost of living, and the things that we want to provide for our family isn't gonna kick our ass. So what, what's your thoughts here on the rising cost of everything? 15 million renters are paying more for housing, more now than any other time in, his, in history. I think for me, uh, barely come, coming out of that uh, spectrum of, of life, what, maybe about three and a half, four years ago, still trying to figure out how to use my money to my advantage. I think asking someone like you a question on then what is the correct way to approach uh, looking for housing, whether it's your, whether you're purchasing a house or a condo or just looking for something to rent and, you know, what are some steps you can take to make sure that it'll fit your budget and still get your bang for your buck while being in, in a decent neighborhood and not having to go to the hood to get something you can afford. This is what, when I uh, left the military, I did eight years in the Marines on active duty, two years in the reserves. And I added up everything that I earned those 10 years of my life, that chunk from 17 to 27, 28 years old. I added it up, it's a quarter million bucks. $250,000 Uncle Sam paid me to serve our country. I'm gonna ask myself one question. I look back in the last 10 years of my life, what do I have to show for? Or, more importantly, what do I have to owe for? All I had to show for was a 1997 Nissan Maxima I still had payments on. I had a duffel bag, sea bag of stuff I accumulated in the military. And the only thing that came out of that that was positive was my son. Is my car. That was my reality factor. And so when people are in a situation where you have to dedicate more of your income to housing and living, and we're, we're going to say it here on and on, and we're going to beat this till a lot more people start waking up. You cannot be in a position where 100% of your income is coming from just one source of employment. Now, use your job as a way to gain experience on somebody else's dime. Use your job to build a work ethic. Use your job, because if you're trying to jump into entrepreneurship too soon, if you suck as an employee, guess what? You're going to suck as an entrepreneur because the worst boss to work for, would you agree with Milton, is yourself. 1, it's easier to work for somebody else. 1,000%. But working for yourself when you don't have to get up in the morning, when nobody's calling you into a meeting, when nobody's hey, 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 come back to lunch uh, 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 quickly, your schedule can be very undisciplined. So, um, but at the same time, too, as well, this is not a position for you to say, you know, I'm just going to throw my hands up and, and, and quit. Mm. So, you know, when, when we're looking at developing a real strategy, you have to come up with a real strategy for it. So your strategy was entrepreneurship. Your strategy was detaching away from the norm. Correct. Um, did a lot of your friends say, hey, man, what are you doing, Milton? What are you, why are you leaving your job? You have, a, you have a salary. You have a good boss. You're there at the UFC gym. Doctor, uh, right, so-and-so is very good to you, which he was, by a great doctor at the UFC great gym. Guy. Why leave that cushy spot to do something entrepreneurial? Well, first, as, as you said, uh, when I decided to take that leap forward, it wasn't just my friends. It was my entire family. Who was, they put your final push back? Who was, who, who was pulling me back? Say, hey man, you need you need to watch what you're doing at a job. You know, whether you work at a gym or an office or as a law enforcement, which you know, a couple of years ago that was what I was involved in. Uh, there, you have security, you have a pension, you have a 401k, you have a secured, you have a, you have a secured job, and that's something that I've been preached through my entire life. But then here comes the pandemic, uh, mid 2020, we get furloughed, and at that point, now you start freaking out because all your bills are dependent on this one nine to five job, and if your clients aren't showing up, you're not making any money. So that's when you know you and I started connecting a little bit more on, on, on a uh, more of a personal level, and we had a conversation of do we sink or swim? What are you going to do now in this situation? You have the skill for it, yep. so utilize that skill. And I decided to take that 
that leap forward to now what, with what I have now in my business is created multiple avenues where I can create um, and monetize from different things, not just one ship that I've been utilizing these last couple of years, but now it's starting to expand in other avenues versus if I were to stay at a job making forty, forty five thousand dollars a year, I would have been stuck at that at that pay. And now with inflation and everything going up, I've actually I would be struggling to even get by paying my rent, buying groceries and just existing on this world. The way I look at it, you got two choices. You either increase and think bigger or decide to say, you know what, I'm going to settle and just put myself in a, a box. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.